Good afternoon, my fellow scientists. It is Tuesday, August 8th, 2017, and today is the day we do a big recap of the battery project. I set out months ago to generate an all iron battery, loosely based on the Edison cell, which was an iron nickel battery, but instead of using nickel, we're using another form of iron. Now, there are some advantages to using all iron instead of an iron nickel cell. Most notably, nickel is rather expensive, but also, Nickel's fairly toxic, and finally, the nickel iron cell degrades itself if iron gets on the nickel side and nickel gets on the iron side. But if you have a battery that's all iron, then it doesn't matter if the components get mixed around, you can still recharge it. So there's some good reasons to do an all iron battery. What are the reasons not to do an all iron battery? Iron is less energetic than nickel, and so you just don't get the kind of capacity that you'd get from an iron nickel cell. What's more, you get a lot less than a lithium ion cell. That being said, if the price advantage beats out the performance disadvantage, it's possible that an all iron battery could still be so cheap that it could work for stationary applications where the issue of weight is less important. So that's the purpose to build an all iron stationary battery for, for instance, grid storage so that a solar or wind-based power system off the grid or on the grid could store its energy for use when the wind wasn't blowing and the sun wasn't a shining. Let's talk about the technical details. How do batteries work in general and how does an iron battery work in particular? So a battery in general needs an anode, something that's going to rust, oxidize, and give off electrons, and then it also needs a cathode, something that is going to plate out, reduce, and accept those electrons. When you move electrons from one side to the other, you get a buildup of negative charge, and so you need to move charge through the battery to balance that. You can move positive charge over to balance the electrons, or you can move negative ions in the opposite direction to balance the electrons. Either way, you have to balance that charge, and if you're gonna balance charge, you need a separator. For the old iron nickel cell, that separator is just alkaline water, right? Sodium or potassium hydroxide. And that solution does not allow iron or nickel to move. They're both insoluble, they both stay where they're put, and it doesn't conduct electricity very well, but it does conduct ions very well. So potassium can move through that, that whole fluid very quickly. And as a consequence, you can get charge balance without having the electrons just cheat and go through the separator. I don't want to go to a saturated potassium hydroxide for two reasons. One, potassium hydroxide is caustic and you don't want it on you. And two, I don't want my iron to precipitate out. I discovered months ago that iron oxide precipitated iron just will not accept electrons. We need to keep our iron soluble which leads us to the iron battery design that I settled on. So I added iron 3 EDTA to the cathode side. Iron 3 EDTA is easy to reduce to iron 2 EDTA. That allows us to take up the electrons from the oxidation of iron. Our charge balance can occur by passage of sodium across that membrane. When charging, the fact that iron EDTA is negative is helpful because that helps it to move toward the place where it's going to be oxidized during charging. So all over, it looks like it was working. You can see I did about 100 charge discharge cycles, looked like it was doing all right. But the next week I came in and found the actual measured capacity after a week was something like one joule. That's not a lot of capacity. So the actual device looks like this. And you can see the iron 3 EDTA has that red orange color that's still there but this is the aluminum current collector and it's badly corroded so at least some of the very low capacity is due to the fact that i've corroded my current collector so yeah battery shot and aluminum is a bad idea but you know this is how we learn if you like that kind of thing, we'll start in on solving the current collector problem tomorrow. We'll look at some of the details on the uh, Coulombic efficiency as soon as we have a decent current collector. And yeah, we'll keep pushing for an all iron battery.
So tune in Monday through Friday. We talk about iron batteries, batteries in general, new technology, and experimental results here in the Allen Lab.